I've got the brand fever. All right, thanks for checking out this video. I'm assuming if you're watching, you have caught Flipgrid Fever, and you're probably wondering about the new options that are available in setting up grids, or it's your first time and you're just not sure how to get started. But either way, this video is going to be one of three that shows and discusses the different variations between the types of grids that you're gonna set up and kind of the why and when you might wanna use them. So from within your dashboard, you're gonna click on New Grid, and here are the three options. The first option is the one we're gonna look at for this video, and that is when your schools or your students and your teachers all have either a Microsoft Office 365 account or they have a Google EDU account. The other videos are gonna talk about the student ID lists, which are great when you have younger kids or kids that do not have school emails. Both of those are very private options and give you the best security for your classes. The last option is a public grid. So for this video, we're gonna select the school option. We're gonna give our grid a name, and then we can give it a custom code if we want to for this purpose of this video. Since I'm gonna delete this, we'll just leave it the way it is. Then select your picture, say next, and then here's where you can enter in your domain. So everybody in my school district has a ssisd.net account, which means their email is some, some form of their name, and then at ssisd.net. If you're gonna connect grid pals, this is another great option for you to keep the security for just the students in each of the different schools that are connecting. You can add as many domains here as you want. So I could even have one Google school and one Microsoft school, it wouldn't matter. But if I add the next one in, I just make sure that they both show up and we'd wanna see them listed something like that. So that would be the two domains for each of the schools that are gonna connect. For the purpose of this though, I'm only gonna keep the one in here so that we can test and show what it looks like when you don't have success versus when you do have success with getting into that grid once it's created. So the last option, all you have to do here is say launch my grid. Then the standard window pops up that lets you go back and customize your grid if you'd like to, add passwords to it, moderate all the different pieces that are available uh, within the grids and creating topics and everything else. I'm gonna say that we're all set and we come back in here and now it's already got me listed in my grid. We know that we have the introduction topic that's automatically there or we have the option of selecting new topics. I can have my kids go to flipgrid.com and then they enter in this code and then the same process will happen that we're about to see. The other option I have is to go ahead and say share the grid. I can get the QR code, have them scan that, or I could put this on a website and they can interact with it directly through that. And the last option I always have is just to send this link right here out to whoever needs to have access to it and then they'll see what we're about to see. So for now, I'm gonna go to a new tab and this is the screen that's gonna come up after they have put in the code or they've gone directly to the link. So you can see the only two options are to sign in with a Google or a Microsoft account. So I'm gonna start by signing in with a account that is not connected. Enter my username and password. It's gonna act like it's ready to go. But what happens is I get this message saying that this domain is not authorized to access this grid. That's what we wanted to see because we know that this one was not correct. But if I'd had, or if I'd kept that in there, like I had it showing earlier, that would have allowed me to go in. So let's look at what it's gonna do once it allows us to go in. So remember in my video, I only set up for a account that ended in at ssisd.net. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an email address in that looks like that, enter my password. And there will also be a prompt that will ask you to allow uh, a couple settings. You just say allow and then boom, you're in the grid, ready to go. And the beautiful part about this is if you watch the video on actually how to submit videos within Flipgrid once you're in it, you'll see that at the end of the video, there's no more need to enter in a email address or a name. And so that speeds up the process on the tail end. So where we maybe have to take a few more steps at the very beginning, we have less at the end. Remember, this is a great option for you to keep your students secure, making sure that only your school email addresses are allowed to touch your grid. And if you're gonna use Grid Pals, this is another great option if both schools have students that have email addresses. Hope this video was handy. Thanks a lot. Well,